Hi guys, one of my favourite items for a teardown, hair dryer. I've done quite a few of these over the years. Uh, back around 2013 I bought 10 of them from a charity shop because they were selling them off at a pound each. So I stripped them all down and pinched the motors out of them. Uh, they were all in working condition but I wanted the motors. I'll just power it up so you can hear what's wrong with this one. Uh, which light's going to go out? That one over there. Okay. So this one does work, but it sounds a bit sad. Although that sounded a bit sad, it didn't sound quite as sad as it has been when we've been trying to dry our hair with it. It's got a bit of a rattle to it as well, normally. Anyway, it does work, but we bought a nice new one. So I can take this one apart and have a look inside. I've done a bit of pre-work on it. I've had a look and it uses one of those security screws or screwdrivers, one of these type with the dimple in the middle. So you can't just put a flat head in there, it needs that little bit dug out the middle. Also the hole wasn't quite big enough for this one to reach, so I've had to open the end of it out a little bit. So I can now get that in there. If I put it in the screwdriver, which would help. You can actually undo it with a bit of luck. That turn, I think it did. Yes, it is turning. But I could probably have opened that hole out a bit further because that's just not going in far enough to get a good grip on it. Oh, I think we're okay now. Yep. Yeah, it's just where this little piece doesn't have much of a shaft to it, so it isn't quite long enough to go in there. Unless I open the end out a bit. Anyway, looks like we've got it out. So now, is it going to pop apart nicely, or is it going to be awkward? Usually they've got little hook loops. Hook loops, I can't think of a better way of describing it. Latches all the way around here that you have to clear, the, clear it out of the way. Uh, can we use something like this? Ooh, that might be coming. Might. Started off well. Oh, I wonder if I've got screws under there. That would make sense, wouldn't it? No, no screw. But it might be that plastic loop that I'm on about. Oh, there we go. Yeah, little bit sticks out. And an indentation in there. I couldn't think of a good phrase to describe it. Anyway, that might still be warm because I've just been running it. Let's see what we've got. 
So that I think is the changer for 240 and 110 volts. Yeah, right, or 230 as it says there. That's our speed settings. 0, 1 and 2, so off 1 and 2. How does it do that? And that's how it does it. Just a big, a great big diode. That's a thermal cutout just there. Bimetallic strip. And a, that thing in there I'm trying to point at. So when it overheats that'll lift up and stop it working. We've got another diode there, another diode there. So that's our rectifier. Well, that's quite a simple idea, really. So we've got rectifiers there to rectify the AC supply to DC across the motor. And then that switch switches in or out that big rectifier so that you're only getting half the AC. Does that make sense? I'd have to draw myself a little diagram because I can't think it through in my head but I think that's what it's doing. off position one power is going to come in there come out of there off position one is going to connect there to there so power in straight through that big diode which is only going to allow the current to flow in one direction so you're only getting half the AC cycle to go through through the thermal cutout through the diode bridge that's converting that little bit of half the AC signal into DC in the right direction for the motor. Gone through the motor, out the other side of the motor. It then uses the actual heater element to drop the voltage down because that motor is going to be probably a 12 volt motor and you're giving it, in our case, 240 volts or 220 volts. So the heater element is actually what's dropping the voltage down and then with that in the other position all the way up powers coming in on the brown and going straight out on that red which is bypassing that big diode can we even see what I'm talking about that's what I'm talking about that big diode so in the half power position we're coming in on the brown lead brown lead through the switch, brown lead, through the big diode, so we're only getting half the power, half the AC power, through the thermal cutout, down here, through the smaller diodes, so it's 
providing DC in the right direction for the DC motor to spin the fan. Out the other side of the DC motor into the heater element and the heater element is what's dropping the voltage down because it's 220 volts in our case in the UK and the motor is probably running on 12 volts so all the rest of the energy and voltage is being dropped across the resistance of the heater element and then if we push this all the way up instead of coming out on the brown lead it's coming out on the red lead and the red lead bypasses that diode so you're getting the full AC up and down which is being rectified to DC there so half power half the AC full power the full AC that's interesting and then yeah big Clive will explain to you what that capacitors for and that little resistor there which will drop the power let the power go from that capacitor after it's been switched off and say that bit switches what between what was it 100, 120 and 230 I should think that's just a matter of how many how much of the heater elements in use if we follow that up, get the dust out. In one case, on the blue wire, it's going to here. on the yellow wire it's going halfway down to there as I noticed where are we that's the one that was rubbing it's actually split there it's probably what the noise was we could hear so uh, yeah you have to actually get the impeller blade off the motor before we can get it apart, which is definitely a one-way operation. I have saved this part in the past. It's a handy mount for the motor, being as it's already drilled and screwed for the right motor. Yeah. Right, the rest of this. Uh, yeah, I could desolder it. We'll just cut it. This wire is that, um, oh, I forgot what it's called, but obviously it's designed to be heated. I've used it for um, hot wire cutting foam. Does that okay?
Right. So there's our motor. I've used these a few times. Quite a few of them have actually been Mabuchi, but this one's a Sun brand. I don't know. I'm holding it over in the sun so I can actually read it. I already looked at it. Where did it say? Oh, it's up. I don't expect the camera to pick it up. It does say sun just around there somewhere. Right, put a propeller on it so we can see it moving. I'll just use a that's a two S, so seven or eight volts. fingers. Sounds okay. Disconnect that before they accidentally touch together. So yeah, uh, oh, we can actually read the writing now. Not that that helps. So, that concludes our teardown of the hairdryer. No, it doesn't, not quite. <laughs> I was talking about this stuff. I'll have to look up the name of it. I can't remember it. But, um, so I use it for hot wire cutting. Because you can stretch it and straighten it out, more or less. And once it heats up, it will go straight. And then I can use that for doing hot wire foam cutting. So I'll put a link in the video description to my hot wire foam cut aeroplane that I did years ago. Thanks for watching. You'll find more information down in the video description. You might like to watch that video up there. And you might like to subscribe over there.